In previous videos, I talked about German and Hungarian efforts during World War II, which ultimately failed to stop the Red Army. In this episode, I'll briefly describe Waffen-SS recruitment drives in Hungary and how the local population reacted to them. Already in 1938, due to the strengthening German influence, the Volksbund der Deutschen in Ungarn was legalized. By 1940, it has set up its network of local associations and initiated the ideological reorientation of ethnic Germans in Hungary. The German-Hungarian agreement, signed on the 30th of August 1940, acknowledged the Volksbund as the sole representative of ethnic Germans, but others, like Jakob Blair, wanted cultural autonomy only and remained loyal to Hungary, while many stayed away from politics and national socialism altogether. Ethnic Germans, the so-called Schwabs, in Hungary remained divided. There were three main categories, namely the Browns, those in the National Socialist camp, the Blacks, the conservative Christian faction, and the Magyarophiles, who favored integration into the Kingdom of Hungary. Other organizations, like the Levente, the National Secretary of Catholic Agrarian Youth, the Association of Catholic Girls, and local authorities were mostly against the Volksbund, but they could not counter its growing influence. In the 1941 census, roughly two-thirds of those who spoke the language identified themselves as German, while the rest chose Hungarian as their nationality. Clashes between the two groups started almost immediately. Those who supported the Volksbund claimed that Western Hungary would soon become part of Germany, and that only those who had contributed to the war effort would be able to stay. Families were divided, marriages broke up due to the opposing views, but the overall picture was different in each village, at least in Baranya County, on which this video focuses. Those who remained loyal to Hungary felt abandoned. They were often called English by the Volksbund fanatics because they refused to fight for Germany. For example, in the village of Herzegtöttös, a fight broke out in the local pub, one person was beaten and stabbed, both sides accused the other of initiating the confrontation. In 1942, Germany officially requested permission to recruit 20,000 ethnic Germans into the Waffen-SS in what became known as the first recruitment drive. Roughly 18,000 joined up, mostly from the returned regions of the Bachka and northern Transylvania. Since their ambassador in Budapest signaled the presence of 112,000 able-bodied men, negotiations for a second round soon started. Within the second recruitment drive, another 20,000 volunteers joined the Waffen-SS until February 1944, this time including some who had served in the Royal Hungarian Army. However, those who volunteered could still lose their Hungarian citizenship, which was a deal-breaker for many. We should note that although these units were not considered Hungarian, both the 8th SS Cavalry Division Florian Geyer and the 18th SS Panzer Grenadier Division Horst Wessel included ethnic Germans from Hungary. In Baranya County, around the cities of Pécs and Mohács, the Volksbund tried to convince the inhabitants in many local villages. Here, the second drive was not particularly successful, for which many blamed those who supported pro-Hungarian sentiments against the German interests. At the same time, some complained that those who were the loudest in agitation refused to join the Waffen-SS and stayed at home, avoiding actual service in the German armed forces. The vast majority of volunteers came from poor families who did not have much to lose, while those who possessed some real estate and animals did not join up. When German forces occupied Hungary on the 19th of March 1944, Dr. Ferenc Bosch, the leader of the Volksbund, proposed a third drive among those who they deemed German based on their ethnicity and lifestyle. Their database contained 202,000 names by the time, of which 80,000 were eventually coerced to join. 
The 22nd SS Volunteer Cavalry Division, Maria Teresa, was raised in April 1944. It was the first Hungarian SS formation. Not long after, on the 1st of May, the defense minister asked all local authorities to assemble a list of all ethnic German males between the ages of 17 and 62 using the list sent out by the Volksbund. This time around, volunteers would not lose their Hungarian citizenship, which certainly helped, but it's important to emphasize that most of the men were conscripted. Those who failed to show up at the predetermined place and time were to be collected and escorted by the local gendarmerie. There were some misunderstandings and some resistance. In certain villages of Baranya County, some tried to hide, others were looking for alternatives with the aid of the local priest, government officials, or officers of the Hungarian army. A few individuals, like Josef Leitner, were arrested, others were sent to concentration camps. Adam Hochmann from Villain was taken by the Gestapo and was subsequently tortured to death. Waffen-SS units, mainly the 31st Division, which had been set up in October in the Bacska region, arrived in the area. Their relationship with the population was less than perfect, their rude and aggressive behavior further alienated those who were trying to avoid service. When conscription into the Waffen-SS, the third round began, clashes broke out once again between the two opposing groups. The only viable alternative for those who remained loyal to Hungary was to join the Royal Hungarian Army voluntarily before they would be drafted into the Waffen-SS. In early June, Defense Minister Lajos Csatai announced that all males over the age of 17 could volunteer, those who were under 18 needed parental consent, and this gave some hope to ethnic Germans who preferred serving in the Honvédség. Once again, certain individuals, like Konrad Heckenberger, a priest at Leinchok, tried to organize and support these individuals, but many Hungarian officers refused to accept ethnic Germans, while others only accepted a small number to avoid repercussions. Interestingly, between June and August, more than 200 of them ended up at the replacement unit of 3rd Battalion, 8th Infantry Regiment at Pécs, with strong support from 4th Corps and possibly from the War Ministry itself. The unit commander, Captain Sabo, had just returned from the front. He was not eager to go back. Still, after six weeks of intense training, Two companies were marched south to Kiskőszeg, where the front was at the River Danube, while third company stayed behind at Pécs as reserve. Most of the ethnic Germans guarded a small section of the line that was not very active. Their main objective was to stay out of harm's way. On the 15th of October, when Horthy was removed from power and Salosi took over, the unit was marched back to Pécs to take the oath once again, then they were sent back to the front, where they stayed until late November. When the Soviet breakthrough took place, a long retreat began, first to Mohaj, then Pech, but many tried to stay in the region, throwing away their weapons and uniforms, hiding from the advancing Soviets as ordinary peasants. What was left of the unit was moved up north to Ershekuivar, then to Austria and Germany, where they were eventually captured by American forces in early May. Most of them decided to return to Hungary, even though they were warned about the possible consequences. Those who did ended up in prisoner camps in Hungary and Romania, only to be transported to the Soviet Union, from where they returned in 1947 and 1948. At home, mass deportation was awaiting them, many were sent to East Germany, from where they once again returned, sneaking back to Hungary in subsequent months. In the end, out of 212 volunteers who joined up to avoid being conscripted into the Waffen-SS, 18 died or disappeared, 16 were wounded, but 117 were still alive in 1994 when Miklós Füzes and András Uivári interviewed them. They did not regret serving in the Royal Hungarian Army, but most of them did mention that their voluntary service 
was not taken into account by the new government, which looked at them with suspicion, mainly because of their ethnic background. Still, most of them managed to spend the rest of their lives in Hungary, in the same region, if not the same village, in the land they had to leave several times. 